everybody. This is Leslie with the live animal program here at the Natural History Museum. This is lunchtime with live animals. We are here every Tuesday on Facebook Live with you to talk about lots of different animals, lots of different topics, and every week we try to change it up just a little bit for you. Now this week, I do have a snake that you haven't met yet. And I'll show you him in just a minute. This is not him. <laughs> um, and we're going to be talking about something a little different. We've talked about snake body language. We've talked about snake venom. Today we're going to talk about and demonstrate snake locomotion. Sounds fun, right? So let's discuss this for a minute first. Right over here I've got a medium-sized reticulated python skeleton. It's actually quite long. It's really beautiful, I think. And, and if you look at the shape of the body, just the undulating body and the curves, you know, it really just reminds me of, of how they move, right? And a lot of people tell me they're kind of nervous about snakes, especially because of the way they move. It's just too different for them. And I think it's too bad. I personally think it's beautiful. If there's any young ones out there, you can slither with me. Isn't that nice? I think it's lovely. So why do they move like that, okay? For starters, you notice on this skeleton has lots of vertebrae. What are vertebrae again? Kids, reach back there, feel the bumps on your spine, in the middle of your back. Those are your vertebrae, the building box blocks of your spine. Snakes have a lot. We have around 26. Snakes can have 200 to 400 vertebrae, okay? So that's a long body. Now. Why is that? So some of the clues to this lie in talking about who their closest ancestor is. Did you know snakes and lizards are very closely related? They're practically the same animal. They're in the same family. Much like dogs and wolves are in the same family, canidae, snakes and lizards are in the same family called the squamates. It's a fun one to say, squamates. You saying that at home? <laughs> Squamata. Now, you might not have ever noticed that they look similar. I brought some pictures here of snakes and lizards. These are ours. You can see some similarities, right? They have these long bodies, scaly bodies. They even like to tongue flick. <laughs> they both do. There's two animals tongue flicking, okay? So there are some similarities, but the thing is, about 150 million years ago, snakes started to branch off, and their bodies started getting really long and they started to develop some other features too. For starters, you notice that lizards, I'll bring back my lizard picture, have ear holes. Okay, can you see the little ear hole right there? All right, so um, having an ear hole like that and also having um, a, a specific lifestyle can be problematic. So I wanted to, to point out to you first you know, think about this for a second. The, the long, long body. Can you think of a place where a long body would be an advantage? Can you think of a lifestyle where having a long body will be an advantage? That actually, you know, this long body has evolved multiple times in the fossil record. In lizards and snakes and even some amphibians. Okay, so that body works really well underground. Uh, also in the water too, but in particular I'm thinking about underground. Um, so back to the ear holes, sorry I jumped the gun there for a second, but so back to the ear holes. Life underground, if you got big old ear holes, they might fill up with dirt, okay? And another thing that's really useful, see you notice the snake by the way, no ear hole, right? Lizards have eyelids, they can blink. Snakes have a fused eyelid, they cannot blink, all right? So snakes started to find that useful for living underground. I'll show you a shed skin here. This is a shed from one of our smaller snakes. And you can even see the little eye caps on the snake. You see how it's a perfect little copy of his face? Snakes don't have eyelids, they don't blink, okay? but they have this cap over their eyes. It's a scale, so that when they're in their happy life underground, they don't get their corneas scratched, all right? So it's pretty useful. 
So a couple of these features I've talked about make life useful underground, and the snakes just started to find it really happy down there. So they didn't have, you know, corneal scratches, and they had these long bodies, and really the lack of legs made a difference for them. I'm going to show you a little fossil here. This is Tetradophis, and it's actually a lizard, but <laughs> what do you notice about this body? It's so snake-like, isn't it? It actually has a lot of features that the snakes do. It's got recurved teeth, and it's got, look at that, a <laughs> long body, and look at those absurd little legs. I want you to remember those teeny-weeny little legs. Okay, now this fossil was actually probably a marine lizard and not a snake, but it kind of gives you the idea of what this transition might look like between lizards to snakes. It's kind of cool, right? Now, there's one other feature that kind of exemplifies this beautiful transition, and that is snakes have legs. You heard me. Okay, some of them, pythons and boas in particular, have what's called vestigial legs, leftover legs. And I'm going to show this for you. They also have a pelvis. It's like a rudimentary pelvis, but there's musculature attached to it, okay? This is an x-ray from our rosy boa. And can you see those two little bones right there? That's the pelvis. How cool is that? There's even like a little femur on there. And so what it looks like on the outside are these spurs. Now this is a big blown up image. You can't always see them that clearly. The thing is snakes, you know, they don't need them for much. They don't need legs, really. So those legs became really, really small over time. The thing is they can still move them. And sometimes they use, the males have bigger ones, Sometimes they use them to grasp the females. <laughs> I had a randy little snake uh, at one time who, every time I picked him up, he would try to grasp me with his little, <laughs> his little hind spurs. It was very cute. Um, now, I'll put this up on our Facebook page. The talented Sarah Edwards drew this little diagram to help you understand how it's related and what bones we're looking at when we look at those cool little uh, pelvic, that pelvic girdle that snakes have. Okay? So I'll put that up on our Facebook for you. So I'm going to introduce Rabbit, our red-tailed boa. And I'm going to try to show you his little spurs. Sometimes he's in the mood, sometimes he's not. I don't make animals participate unless they want to. So excuse me while I turn my camera a little bit. All right, now I made this climbing platform, as it were. It might be just a little bit small for a rabbit. <laughs> but I thought you might still enjoy seeing him use it. What he's probably going to do, come here little guy, now this is just his transport carrier. This is not his home. There we go. Here's a rabbit. Now I'm going to give him a second to kind of figure out where he is. And give him a little support before I see if he wants to show off his spurs. Let's see. They're right, they're right here by his vent. <laughs> Boy, they're a little hard for you to see. Right there. Can you see that little tiny spur? How cool is that? Okay, thanks, Rabbit. That was nice of you. So what I'm going to do here is put Rabbit on his climber. And what he'll probably do is go straight to the top, to his little perch at the top. That's his favorite. But I thought you might enjoy just seeing the beauty of locomotion in snakes. Because, you know, they don't actually get a lot of credit. There we go. For being able to go as many places as they can. It's really quite amazing how uh, mobile snakes are without having any hands, okay? Without having any legs. So how do they do it? How do they climb? They have this amazing muscular body. So I mentioned all the vertebrae. Let's make sure rabbit goes up the right side so you can see him. Okay, good. They have these amazing muscular little bodies. Okay, now we have about 800 muscles. Snakes have about 
10,000 to 15,000 muscles in their body. How cool is that? So they can use these muscles to go anywhere their food can go. They also use their scales, right? Now there's all different, I told you he'd go right up to the perch. <laughs> there's all different names for the way snakes move. There's a serpentine motion and there's a rectilinear motion. I'm not gonna get into that too much, but I thought you might enjoy seeing a video of rabbit moving on the nature lab floor which really exemplifies how he uses all his muscles. I'll put this up on our Instagram too. Oh, I already did actually. Isn't that beautiful? Can you see all of the different muscles at once? So I mentioned muscles and scales, right? So attached to all those vertebrae are muscles and all around the ribs and under the ribs are muscles. Attached to the skin are muscles, okay? The secret lies in their ability to climb and go anywhere their food can go is the scales. This is the little piece of rabbit shed skin. You can see he's much longer than this. But you notice these scales on the back. These are the ones you might recognize. They provide the snake with cryptic coloration. You can see his little bow tie in there. They provide the snake protection. They keep it moisture. And they do what scales do. You might not have ever seen the belly scales. Very different looking, right? These belly scales are called scoots. Actually, the largest scale on any reptile is called its scoots. And coincidentally, the scoots help him to scoot. Cute, right? So these big, thick scales, they overlap and they act like grappling hooks to help the snakes climb. And it's pretty amazing where they can climb. Here is a picture of a snake climbing straight up a tree. That's a rat snake, straight up a tree. Now a big guy like Rabbit, he might have to do something like that, <laughs> go around the tree, but it's pretty amazing. I've seen 12 foot snakes scale a 40 foot tree in just seconds. Because they wrap that tail around the bottom, straighten up their body, wrap it up there, bring up the tail, repeat very, very fast. It's pretty amazing. And then here's some adorable little snakes climbing a brick wall, a cactus, right? How cool is that? Could you imagine doing all that with no legs? Just think about that for a second. It's pretty incredible. So I wanted you to kind of see the versatility in snakes and think about how does this help him as a predator. Any thoughts in your mind how that helps? Let's play a game, actually, as long as Rabbit cooperates and doesn't try to leave. You kids out there, you adults can play too. We're gonna play who's a better hunter, a wolf or a snake, <laughs> all right? We're gonna be wolves and we're running along the forest floor. By the way, they eat roughly the same food. They eat, they all eat rodents, both eat rodents, um, sometimes bigger mammals, but today we're chasing a rat, okay? Let's be a wolf. We're running along. You can give a little wolf howl if you want. Ow. Okay. And we're just about to catch that rat and it disappears down a hole. What are you going to do? Now I know there's kids out there going, dig a hole. Yes, wolves can dig. But by the time they dig a hole big enough for their big wolf hinder, <laughs> that rodent is going to be in Iowa. Okay. So he can't dig a hole fast enough to catch that rodent. Now let's be snakes. We're slithering along. I see some tongue flicking, all right? And we're just about to catch that food. And it goes down a hole. Can a snake go down in the hole? Remember all these great features that we talked about, right? No legs, no pesky legs to get in the way. And protected eyes, right? All that cool stuff. All right, let's do it again. We're a wolf and we're just about to catch our rodent and it goes, oh, how about this? It goes in the water. Hmm? Yes, wolves can swim. They don't generally hunt in the water, especially not deep water, okay? They can doggy paddle, but they're not really gonna be hunting in deep water. Sorry, Wolfie, out of luck. Let's be snakes, and we're slithering along, and we're just about to catch that food, and it goes in the water. Can snakes swim? Yes, they can. Very natural body motion, all right? All snakes can swim. Some even hunt in the water. Here's one. <laughs> It just caught a big old fish. 
How silly is that? All right, last one. We're running along. We're wolves, and we're just about to catch that prey, and it goes up a tree. The wolf's really out of luck, isn't he? He's having a bad day. Let's be snakes, and we're slithering along, and we're just about to catch our prey, and it goes up a tree. Can snakes climb trees? They sure can. We talked about that for sure. So I wanted you to think for a minute. By the way, I'm just joking. You know, there's not really one's not a better hunter than the other. Just because he can go anywhere his food can go, it's really cool. Doesn't mean he's a better hunter. Wolves are really good at what they do, okay? They're smart and they hunt in packs. But I want you to think about how amazing it is that this guy can go so many different places without having any arms or legs. It's really neat and I think quite beautiful. When I look at snakes, I see the beauty of evolution. It's gorgeous to me. So I hope you had fun thinking about snakes and lizards and the way they move and why they move that way and the history of these gorgeous long bodies. If you have any questions for me, please leave them below and I will try to answer. But also check our live animal program Instagram account at NHMLA underscore live animals. You can check out older videos, you can check out some of the clips from today's presentation, and you can also ask me questions there. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you again next week. Bye.